Hello again, Year 10. We're going to be continuing today with education policy, um, and now we're going to be looking at it from 1988, looking in particular at the Education Reform Act and this notion of marketisation. But before we begin, I just want to do a very quick recap on what we did last lesson. Um, on this slide, we've got four questions which look at the tripartite system. And on the next slide, we're going to be looking at a bit of detail um, in, on the comprehensive system once again, just to do as a recap. Um, I have submitted the PowerPoint for this lesson on showing my homework, and I'd like you to complete all tasks, including this one, on the PowerPoint and then upload it to show my homework at the end of the lesson when you've finished. Can you please now pause me as you work your way through these four questions? You can look at your notes from last lesson if it helps you, that's absolutely fine. Um, so just pause me as you do that. Okay, Fab, so hopefully you've just done that bit of recap on the tripartite system just to refresh your knowledge. Um, I'll have a look at all the answers you put when, once you submit the work for me. So on the next slide, we have got a four marker which um, is looking at the comprehensive system. And it's asking you to identify and explain one, just one disadvantage of the comprehensive system. So last lesson, you completed a gap fill, which looked like this. Um, and the work that you've submitted so far is great. All of you have got this one correct. Um, and this, this section of, the, of information about the comprehensive system will be really useful for you guys to just read over again when you come to answer this question. So the um, writing that I've got in blue at the bottom of the paragraph is all the information that you'll need to really pay close attention to when you're thinking about how you can identify and explain a disadvantage of the comprehensive system. So let's just read this paragraph together quickly. In 1965, comprehensive schools were introduced across the UK. This was because the government realised the problems of the tripartite system and wanted to make the education system fairer. Comprehensive schools have no entrance tests and they are free to attend. Instead, students were selected on the base of catchment area, a geographical location surrounding the school. All children living in this area, regardless of their social class or ability, would go to the local comprehensive. The hope was that by ensuring that children of different backgrounds mix of school within school, social barriers would be broken down. However, others argued that the brightest students would not, were not able to develop their full potential. Additionally, houses around the best schools went up in price, meaning that working class students could not afford to live there, leading to some schools being full of middle class students and others being full of working class students. This means that schools with middle class students will do better because they will attract better teachers and thus higher standards of teaching. Therefore, comprehensivization did not fully solve the problem of inequality. So if we were to um, try and answer this question, let's look at this slide here where um, we're going to try and plan it together. So here is the section that was written in blue on the other slide, which is the criticism section of that paragraph, which will enable us to identify and explain a disadvantage. So, however, others argue that the brightest students were not able to develop their full potential. Why is this? Why is it that the brightest students were not able to develop their full potential? Well, because now all students went to the same schools, meaning that, that they were full of mixed ability students. You might remember last lesson we had that picture where we had one boy who was targeted at grade nine, another boy who was targeted at grade three. That boy who was targeted at grade nine may not be able to reach his full potential because of mixed ability teaching. So therefore he's being held back. That's one disadvantage that you could go on to explain for a P-E-E-L paragraph. Additionally, houses around the best schools went up in price, meaning that working class students could not afford to live there, leading to some schools being full of middle class students and others being full of working class students. So here we could say that one disadvantage could therefore be the flaws in the selection, um, selection through catchment area idea. Okay, so we know that all 
students couldn't go to the same school really because you had to live close to the school to go there. We saw last lesson in the map that I showed you that all the best schools are in the really um, affluent, rich areas full of middle class families. So this idea of inequality is actually being maintained within the comprehensive system because of the selection through catchment idea. So here are some disadvantages you could talk about. And this is the, um, the structure I'd like you to use on this slide here. So what I would like you to do is just pause me and I'd like you to attempt to answer these, these question, this question on the PowerPoint that I provided. You can flick back and forth at the slide, that's fine. Um, but try and answer to the best of your ability and just pause me whilst you do that. Okay, great, well done. So hopefully you finished doing that now. So let's move on to um, the 1988 Education Act, looking at marketisation. So the 1988 Education Reform Act, that is a picture there of Margaret Thatcher. Um, and this act was introduced under her government. So in 1998, the Education Reform Act was introduced. This act marketised education. This meant it simply transformed educa education into a business, introducing aspects of competition between schools and consumer choice for parents. OK, so in the same way that we have a choice over the clothes we wear, the supermarkets we shop in and the media outlets we used, marketisation also created this choice, this notion of choice, for parents to choose from a range of different schools which school they wanted to send their, their, their child to and enabled them to choose from a range of schools that they thought best suited their needs. And this was called parentocracy. So the marketisation of ed education brought with it parentocracy, which means increased parental choice for parents to decide which school they send their child to. And parentocracy simply translates into parental choice. OK, so that's a key word, parentocracy, that you need to know and remember. It just simply means parental choice. So how was parental choice um, initiated? Well, the, 19 education, the 1988 Education Reform Act introduced league tables. And league tables are a table of school performance data which enable parents to identify the highest achieving schools. So all schools in an area would be put into a table and all their performance data, so all the grades that students got, who did the best in certain subjects, would be put onto this table so parents could see which schools in the area were achieving the highest. And the 1988 Education Reform Act introduced the national curriculum. And this meant that now all schools had to study the same subjects. And this made it super easy for parents to compare schools' achievement. Because all schools studied the same subjects, they could see which schools were doing best in certain subjects. So the aim of the national curriculum was to measure students' performance against national targets within the same area, so parents could see clearly which schools were doing the best. So there's a link for you here, guys, for you to look at the league table for schools in Tower Hamlets. Um, and you'll be able to find Bishop Chandler on there. So if you just follow that link, um, there's a screenshot of it here, but it's very small. So if you follow that link, it's really interesting to look at the schools in the area which we're in and to see which schools are doing best, which schools are doing not so well. So something for you to have a little look at. OK, so um, here, guys, we have got an extract of writing. Um, on the marketisation of education, followed by two simple questions at the bottom. Um, your task is to simply read the extract above, um, which is all about marketisation, and then answer these questions, which are also on the following slide, written a lot bigger, so you can answer them in full. Um, this paragraph here, guys, introduces a sociologist called Gerwitz et al., and Gerwitz um, is someone who talks in great detail about the marketisation of education and who's a name you need to remember. So I'm just going to ask that you read through this um, and then answer the questions which are on the next slide on your PowerPoint in full. OK, fab. So hopefully you've had a chance to do that now. Um, for question one, when you're looking at the effects of marketisation, 
two effects you were talking about, I would have liked you to have spoken about something to do with um, how standards are driven up because there's now this competition between them, how schools now act like a business, how there's consumer choice, also known as parentocracy, so that kind of thing. And guys, I want you to be explaining your answers in full for me. And number two, which social groups may face inequality as a result of marketization? Obviously, Gerwitz et al. are talking about how it is the working class who are seriously disadvantaged by this. Um, a, because maybe things such as cultural deprivation, uh, they might not be able to read and write. Perhaps language isn't their first language, uh, English isn't their first language. They can't quite understand what the league table are trying to communicate. Um, they might not be able to read and write anyway. They might use what Vernon Zeman would call the restricted speech code more than the elaborate speech code. So all these different kind of things, guys, are going to be really disadvantaging working class parents. Also, things such as money. So they might not have economic capital. So therefore, they cannot pay to put their child on a bus every day to travel miles and miles and miles to the best school. So they're going to have to make do with maybe slightly worse schools in their immediate area. So I hope that's all making sense to you now. Um, let's move on to the next slide. OK, so. The 1988 Education Reform Act also led to serious changes to education that led to increased competition and in an attempt to raise standards. And they did this through um, five um, main changes. So introducing the national curriculum, which we've already spoken about a little bit, introducing league tables, which we've spoken about a little bit, creation of Ofsted, um, this idea that of parental choice, which we know is parentocracy, um, and a greater emphasis on vocational education. Now, on showing my homework, I've also attached to you a worksheet which talks about in detail um, these five changes under the Education Reform Act. And then it's got two questions for each change that you need to answer after reading the little paragraphs. So I'd like you to now pause me as you complete this worksheet. OK, and once you've completed the worksheet, um, resume me and we'll carry on. Or obviously, guys, this worksheet needs to be submitted alongside the PowerPoint that um, you're going to be completing this lesson. OK, great. So hopefully you've now done that. Well done. So let's move on. So we've now looked at data in detail at the marketization of education. Um, I hope it's all making sense to you. I've now got this practice question. Um, which is just a three marker and it's to do with the marketization of education and it's simply asking you describe what is meant by the marketization of education um, and this is a PEE -E paragraph it's not a peel with an L on the end because it's only a three marker so it's simply a PEE -E. and I've done the first P for you so the marketization of education was introduced in 1988 under the Education Reform Act and meant that schools became more business based and began to compete with one another under consumer choice. For example, so for the example section, you might decide to talk about one of the five initiatives that we just looked at on the previous worksheet that marketization introduced. So you could talk about league tables. You could talk about this idea of parentocracy. You could talk about this idea of the national curriculum and how all of those things led to schools being more business-like and led to them competing with one another and led to this idea of consumer choice. And then for the blue bit, when it says this meant that, you're simply going to be explaining how this meant that schools had acted more like a business, how this meant that schools now had to compete with one another. OK, so I want you to give me examples. I want you to try and use keywords. OK, sometimes, guys, you submit three or four markers and you don't go into enough detail. So I need you to be going into as much detail as you can. Use the PowerPoint to help you and see if you can attempt this practice question. I hope you found this lesson useful. As always, email me with any questions you may have. Um, and I'll try and get back to you as best as I can. Good luck, guys. Bye bye.